Your computer's a mess. Files scattered everywhere. Errors popping up, apps crashing, and a blue screen of death just appeared. To avoid such distractions, I'll introduce you to the COM system, ensuring your computer stays organized and working smoothly. The COM system compromises three key steps. Clean, organize, and maintain. First, we'll clear out the junk, cluttering your system. Then, we'll organize those chaotic files. Finally, I'll show you how to keep things running smoothly with some easy methods. I will provide a bunch of different tips and tools and you should experiment and pick the ones that work and leave the rest. You can also adapt and edit them based on your own use case and workflow. Clean. In this section, we'll delete and disable everything you don't need to minimize distractions. Start by clearing your desktop of unnecessary files, folders and icons. Having all that clutter on display is super distracting. I will show you where to put those random files later in the video. To make your desktop look extra clean, consider using a simple wallpaper. You can find a bunch of clean wallpapers on an app called Timeline that you can download on the Microsoft Store. Now go through your downloads folder and other folders you store files in, deleting files you no longer need and duplicate files. Now uninstall temporary files with Bleachbit. By the way, you'll find all download links in the description. After you open Bleachbit, go through the list of apps and check the temporary files that you want to clean. But be aware to delete passwords if you use the password manager that is built into your browser. And based on the files that you will delete, the process might take a while. So make sure you do it when you don't need to be using your computer. To avoid deleting files that you don't want to delete, you can use the preview feature, which will preview the files that will be deleted without actually deleting any files. To delete other temporary files that Bleachbit didn't open this cleanup, select the drive you want to clean up, go through the list of temporary files and select the ones you want to delete. You can see that if I delete all these files, I will gain 10 gigabytes. If you want to further clean up your system, you can select clean up system files, which will scan the drive for temporary system files. Make sure you do the process for all disk drives to automatically clean up Temporary Files, Open Settings, System, Storage, and Storage Sense. Customize these settings and Windows will automatically clean up files based on your preferences. But if you want to do a more aggressive cleanup of files, use Desk Cleanup Utility. To further clean your computer and save disk space, delete cache files left from editing software. To do that on Premiere Pro, open it go to edit preferences media cache delete and if you have no active projects choose delete all media cache files and click ok wish 3 displays your files and folders visually and enables you to easily spot the ones that are hidden away in your file system and enable you to delete them to further clean your system uninstall apps you don't use anymore with bulk crap uninstaller. It excels at removing large amounts of applications with minimal to no user input while requiring next to no technical knowledge. It can detect most applications and games, even portable or not registered, clean up leftovers, force uninstall, automatically uninstall according to pre-made lists, and much more. It also has a cleanup program files folders which will look for and delete leftover files from old apps after you've deleted all those files empty your recycle bin if you recently downloaded apps that add useless context menu items you can disable them using an app called context menu manager it lists the items based on where you're right clicking for example when you right click on a file you get a different context menu than when right clicking on a folder and when right clicking on a disk drive etc. So basically find the type of context menu that you want to declutter and find the specific items that you want to disable and go through context menu manager looking for those items and disabling them when right clicking on a image file or a video file. If you're looking to disable those types of items Go to perceived file type and choose the relevant option. Startup items make your computer boot up slower, use up computer resources and decrease performance. And even though you can disable startup items on the task manager, there are ones that are hidden. That's why we'll be using a tool called Autoruns. Open Autoruns as administrator, enable hide 
Microsoft and Windows entries to be safe, go through the list of startup items and disable the ones you don't need. Read the description, the publisher and the location so that you can make sure you can safely disable the item. But be aware not to disable Windows related services and make sure to screenshot or screen record the process so if something stops working you can tell which items could have caused the problem that you should re-enable. For example, malware bytes has a startup item that if I disable the whole app stops working and displays an error. Organize. And this section will organize our files so that we can easily find them and keep our system nice and tidy. There's many ways to organize your files and a lot of different folder structures. And the easiest to implement is Para from Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte. Para consists of projects, areas, resources, and archives. Files are organized based on actionability. Projects are immediate. Areas are for the long term. Resources are of potential use and archives are inactive or completed. You should avoid storing these folders in the documents folder because apps and software clutter it with folders and you should put them somewhere on an SSD. So working with the files inside of them is faster. For example, like when video editing, the process is way faster. If you don't have enough space to store all those folders on an SSD, at least put the project folder in there. Projects. These are specific outcomes or deliverables with defined endpoints. Within the actual project folder, you put everything related to it from documents, design, video, sound effects, music, project files, and more. My project folder structure contains exports where I put test renders and different versions of a video media where I store all video, audio, and image files alongside any other asset and a PSDs folder where I store the Photoshop project files for thumbnails. Areas are broader areas of responsibility or folks that don't necessarily have a specific end date. For instance, education and finances could be categorized as areas. Each area can have its own folder where relevant documents and files are stored. I only have a YouTube folder in my areas. I have a lot of areas in my notes though. Resources. These are reference materials or tools that support your projects and areas. I store courses, assets, plugins, inspiration, and more in the resources folder with subfolders for each type of resource. Archives. These are information or documents that you want to keep for future reference, but don't need to access regularly. Completed projects, unused footage, and old documents can be moved to an archives folder. To keep your main folders organized. To save ourselves time, we'll put all incoming files in an inbox folder and then organize them later. Make an inbox in the para folder or use the downloads folder, but avoid saving files on your desktop to stay focused. The inbox contains all sorts of files, ones you're not sure where to put, files you plan to organize later, files you couldn't delete during cleanup but aren't sure where they belong, and more. When you're creating the para folders for the first time, you'll benefit from the Ctrl Shift N shortcut, which will create a new folder. To make finding and searching for files even easier, utilize easy to understand naming conventions. Name files descriptively so you can understand their content at a glance, but strike a balance between specificity and simplicity. Avoid overly complex file names. Make them as simple and as short as possible. If you've landed on a good naming convention, check out the Power Rename Guide video to batch rename all your older files to your new naming convention. Pen frequently accessed folders to quick access for quick retrieval. Be mindful of the files you create, keeping only essential documents and data. Archive unused stuff. Asset management. I store my assets in the resources folder. Within the main folder, I have different subfolders for photo, video, audio, and fonts. Photo assets include still images, backgrounds, textures, and graphics. Video assets includes B-roll, overlays, GFX, and other elements. Audio for all your sound files, including music tracks and sound effects. Fonts for, well, fonts. I used to try to copy and paste files from the assets library to the project folder, but that was time consuming and I ended up not putting everything I used into it. So I started editing directly out of the assets folder, which cuts down 
on the amount of organization that I had to do. If you will be working with big asset files, you should store them on an SSD drive to make importing and working with these files faster while editing. To take advantage of all the organization that you've done, you will greatly benefit from an app called Everything Search, which lets you instantly search for files instead of the slow Windows search. You can find the guide to using Everything Search in the top right corner and in the description. For example, I can easily look for textures in the Assets folder with Everything Search. Project Management you should collect and organize all assets that you will need for your project before starting so you don't have to be organizing stuff while you're working and if you find yourself wanting to go to the internet to grab something force yourself to work with what you have like what Cal Newport says in his book Deep Work use project templates Post Haste is a project management tool that allows you to set up file and folder templates for your projects. Create a new project and everything's organized ready for you to start. This is the folder structure that I use and I'll leave it in the description. To import it to post haste, click add, scroll down and click import folder structure. You will notice that some folders have template in their name and by enabling rename files called template to the project name, those folders will be renamed to the project's name. To make sure post haste will save the project in your projects folder, open preferences, go to project, enable fixed project location and browse for your project folders location. If you're using dates in your project folder structure, you can choose the format that you like from this drop down. You can also separate different parameters with the character that you like using the separator character setting. You can even use a space. To customize the parameters, open preferences, go to parameters, to delete a parameter, click on it and click the delete key on your keyboard and to add a new parameter choose a new type from the drop down menu to create a new project choose the template that you want to work with change the value of the parameters and click create project it will automatically import the folder structure and create a project in the project's location that you set after you finished with a project review and reallocate intermediate packets like b-roll animations or presets with a reusable value to other projects or to your assets folder and finally archive your project move the project folder to the archives to declutter your active projects folder automation we'll be using an app called file juggler to automate some of the file organization tasks you can try file juggler for free for 30 days but you can see that trial has been going on for 257 days the trial never ended which means file juggler is basically a free app these are the most helpful automations that i can create with file juggler i will leave these four rules in the description and you can import them by going to the settings and clicking import rules the first rule sends dot ico files to icons folder it monitors the downloads folder for files with dot ico file extensions and moves the file to the icons vault you can customize these rules however you like and based on your use case the second rule monitors the downloads folder for files containing .ttf and .otf file extensions which are font extensions and then moves those files to the fonts assets folder the third rule monitors the downloads folder for compressed files then extracts the folder and sends the zip to the recycle bin uh, the last rule monitors the downloads folder for files that haven't been modified for more than a month and that either have a .exe extension or a .msi extension and sends them to the recycle bin create your own rules to automate the organization of your own files but be aware that file juggler moves renames and deletes files quickly without warning before you start working on a rule that manages your files make sure you have a backup so you can recover from an error in your setup mistakes will happen to be safe keep the rules disabled by default and only enable them when they're needed also make sure you test the rules that you create maintain these are things you have to do to make sure your computer keeps working properly and performing at its best. Regular maintenance tasks. 1. Update Windows. But check for potential issues with the next version before updating because often an update to Windows might introduce more issues than it fixes. To only get essential updates, download Windows from the Microsoft Store 
and open it go to health scroll down to system updates and set it to security which will make windows only check and download security updates other content updates will not be downloaded if you know an update that windows wants to install on your computer has lots of issues and you want to make sure that it will not be installed download a utility called windows update blocker and select disable updates to update apps use winget ui and microsoft store to update your apps but make sure you conduct research or wait at least three months to download an update especially apps you use for work like your video editor or design apps winget ui is like a replacement for the microsoft store you can also use it to update software the cool thing is that it will also update the apps you download from the internet unlike microsoft store 3 use nv clean install for the bloated nvidia drivers download nv clean install open it and choose install best driver for my hardware or manually select a driver version if you use your computer for gaming choose a desktop driver and if you use it for creative work choose the studio driver version you can also periodically check for driver updates in the background with this utility after you choose the driver that you want to install click next and select the components to install for me i only need the display driver which is the minimum you might need the recommended or more stuff from this you can find a description of each component on the right check the settings on screen and select next and if you want to install the driver right now click install which saves the driver with all the settings that you've chosen to a folder for later installation or a build package which creates a single installer that exe file that can be copied to other machines i will choose install agree and continue choose one of these two options if you will choose custom i recommend that you use the display driver uninstaller which offers a better deep load of old nvidia drivers i will choose express click next and wait for the driver to install for regularly backup date keep important backups and large files on an external hard drive five run a malware scan i use malware bytes you can use microsoft defender the next maintenance tasks are only done when needed fix issues with windows go to health under repair you can use this command to look for system corruptions and this command to check your disk drives for issues this command is like this one but worse so just use system file checker you can scan or repair you can get details on by clicking this icon you can also check your device for possible memory issues you can do some cleaning up unpin all items from the taskbar clear junk files clear file explorers quick access folders clear microsoft store cache when you have issues with downloading or updating apps flush the dns cache for issues when browsing the internet and for security reasons and delete restore points to save space you can also restart the graphics driver if your display has weird issues like freezing or flickering and rebuild the icons cache if your icons or thumbnails are blank blurry or corrupted if you want to check your hardware for issues use specky which lets you get information about your computer's hardware their status their health and their temperature to see they are causing any issues if you're still facing issues consider reinstalling windows windows automatically does some maintenance tasks to change its settings open control panel search for maintenance select change automatic maintenance settings and choose the best time to run these tasks preferably when you're not using your computer and if you'd like to know about the tools that make file explorer more functional and fast check out this video